Okay, so this afternoon I'm talking to uh, Amber Bryce. She's a freelance journalist, lives in uh, in deepest, darkest London. So, uh, Amber, uh, I've said what your job title is. Can you tell me a bit, little bit about your role, what you've done, the sorts of um, things you've been been doing recently? Sure. So, uh, so for about four years, I was working at the Times and Sunday Times. Um, as a journalist and then I decided to go freelance. I wanted to explore working with different publishers, have a bit more freedom and to kind of be my own boss. Um, and since going freelance about a year and a half ago, I've worked with various publications. Um, but currently I'm uh, doing a contract role at Twitter. Um, and I'm sure everyone will know Twitter, um, but a big social media brand. And there's obviously we're living in a time where there's a lot of misinformation. We've got COVID-19. We've just had the US elections. And so it's been really important to have uh, a kind of journalistic viewpoint on the conversations that are happening online, just to make sure that we're fact checking um, information that's out there, curating conversations. Um, if you go onto Twitter and you see the trends and you see little descriptions or you see the explore tab with various news stories, that is what our team does. And we're still quite a new team, uh, but it's very interesting work. You get to learn about lots of weird and wonderful things. I now know a lot about K-pop and Minecraft. <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's essentially seeing something that people are talking about a lot and getting to the heart of it and researching it and then getting the facts straight about it so that the conversation doesn't veer off into misinformation. Um, so, yeah, it's a slightly unusual uh, journalistic job, um, <laughs> but uh, it's really important and it's interesting because it's obviously being part of a big tech company where things work differently. And there's the opportunity to kind of learn more about tech. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what I'm currently doing. Um, I'm not sure if you wanted me to go more into my background as well. Well, uh, yeah, in a second. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I mean, I'd like to look at um, what in the current role, um, what kind of a typical uh, day looks like. So, I mean, I, I, I can't even imagine. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. So typical day for me. Um, so a lot of journalist roles, you will work. Um, you will work weekends as well um, and you will work generally um, start quite early I mean I start at 8 a.m which is probably not actually that early but it feels early to me <laughs> um, and the first thing I'll do is always read read the news read a variety of, of news outlets and get a feel for what the conversation of the day is so what people are talking about what the headlines are um, I will then have a morning meeting with my colleagues and we kind of discuss what we should prioritize. We would always prioritize, um, because Twitter is global, we would prioritize typically US and then UK, Canada, India is also a huge market. So we look at the conversations that are going on in each of those markets. Um, and then we are designated um, different things to curate basically. So we had the storm Kristoff um, mm -hmm. yesterday and that was designated to me. So I basically curated a moment, a Twitter moment um, with all the information updates about it. I wrote a headline description um, and just spent some time kind of finding um, the tweets from verified sources, from journalists, um, and putting it all together in a way that it tells a story. So each new tweet has more information and uh, so that people reading it, because if you go onto Twitter and you see a trend, you could become confused because there's lots of bits of information everywhere. So the yeah. idea is that I'm creating a source that people can go to and they get all the facts and they know exactly what's happening. Um, so that would be my the start of my day. I would then be... Um, essentially just looking for news stories that we should we should be creating so um i use uh, a few tools for that and it's basically just looking out for breaking stories and things that are happening that are that we should be actually um telling on our platform rather than letting conversations run wild so um it could be uh if somebody's recently died or it could be um if there's been for instance, a terrorist attack, or even if there's any conversations that are even not as big as that, something that is kind of just breaking about in particular COVID vaccines, 
Um, it's just really having a keen eye for what the big stories are that are happening mm -hmm. and then going more into depth with them and explaining them um, in a way that makes sense to a global audience. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and that's pretty much throughout the day I would be doing that, um, just sourcing stories and then putting them together. Okay, fab. So you mentioned about the global audience. I mean, does is all of the work that you and your team do in English, or do you do you have to operate in different languages, or do you, do you look at what the um, what's going on in in different languages across Twitter globally, or is it is it kind of an English focus? Uh, so I'm on the UK team, so we primarily look at English, mm -hmm. but there are a variety of curator roles. Um, for people that can speak different languages. That's something that's really important. There are teams for Brazil, for, um, you know, for Spain, for Italy, for everywhere. And so there is definitely, it's definitely a plus, I think, in, in a journalistic role, if you can speak multiple languages, because you can obviously help to, um, you know, to, to target more markets but when i say global we would still do um so for instance india is something that i work on quite a lot and twitter and in india tends to primarily still be in the english language so um a lot of the stories that are read there tend to still be english so um so the markets that i cover are canada us india ireland and uk okay. um so yeah so it's just english for me but there are definitely a lot of separate teams that deal with all the other um languages i i asked the question quite selfishly because i'm a languages teacher by trade oh. <laughs> so uh, so it, it's probably going to be of interest to people in my department who uh who are kind of doing languages may consider doing languages in the future it's a it's a potential role uh, that they can... definitely. it's definitely a big bonus if you can speak uh multiple languages um there's a lot of roles in journalism out there uh definitely and i know this is a slightly unusual one but um and, and also in social media if you can if you can translate and speak to different markets then it's brilliant and it's also super interesting because you get to dive into the news in different countries um mm. more in depth so fantastic so um let's get, let's talk about you you can your background and um the i suppose the, the steps that you took to to get to journalism and then also maybe think about well what you would give as advice to anyone at school at my school who is thinking of journalism as a career and what the career paths and directions could be sure uh so my background was that i um i really didn't know what i wanted to do um i felt very stupid at school and I didn't really know if I could, um, I guess I had quite low expectations for myself, but I did know that I really liked writing and I knew that I enjoyed creative um, subjects. Mm -hmm. And I spent a lot of time growing up writing short stories and things like that. So I decided to pursue English literature. So I went to Aberystwyth Uni to study mm -hmm. English literature and creative writing. And when I left, I kind of just felt very unsure of what I was doing, which I think is normal. Absolutely. And I ended up falling into a lot of jobs where I was doing creative writing for companies. So I was I wrote for Tesco for a while. I wrote um, for a travel company where I was writing travel brochures. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a lot of sort of taking opportunities as they came up that interested me and falling into bigger things yeah. and I ended up um, applying for a job at the Times and I thought I have no journalistic experience I'll never get it um, but amazingly I did and I think the reason I got it is because it was on a slightly unusual team there so it was on a team which was very focused on digital on moving the paper over to digital and I had a lot of digital experience okay. um, and so uh, so I kind of got in through that mm -hmm. and I think that really shows that even if you think that you could never do something and that you're not good enough to do something always try always give it a go because you just never know mm -hmm. and so I worked there for four years and then really just decided to go freelance because I felt like I wanted some more creative freedom I wanted to try being my own boss for a while and I think we do live in a time where there's a lot of opportunities to kind of um pursue what you really enjoy and make a living from it and yeah. not feel held back because um the i mean the internet has given us a lot of opportunities in that sense no matter yeah. how niche your interests are you can pursue 
working in it. Um, and so I think in terms of getting into journalism, because I'm quite unconventional, um, a lot of my colleagues went to, uh, they did masters in journalism. Um, I think it's called, an, I might get this wrong, NCTJ, which is a journalistic qualification. Okay. Um, so you can qualify in journalism if you're interested in it. Um, but I would also say, obviously, it's not essential. Um, I didn't do that. I studied English literature. Mm -hmm. I think in general, to get into journalism, you just have to have a real uh, curiosity about people, about the world. Yeah. Um, you kind of want to investigate things further. And I think you can even do that in your own time. If you enjoy writing, I would say just always write, write every day. And really, my best advice, I think, would just be to understand that ev everybody learns differently. Never feel that you, you know, because somebody you know is doing better in something that you can't do it because everybody is completely different. Absolutely. And also really pursue what you're passionate about, because learning is amazing. And it's something that that really fulfills me still learning new things. And I think if you can take the pressure off of learning and actually see the the enjoyment in it and see that it's an amazing thing you're getting to learn new skills then that's really exciting and I think definitely um find what what makes you happy and pursue that um and you'll be surprised at the skills that develop out of that um so yeah I that that would be my best advice I think really that, 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 that's great so I mean would, would you say that um the typical route of into journalism will, would be a degree route or is, is there other options? Uh, I mean, I know you said about writing every day and kind of honing your skills, I suppose, but um, are there kind of non-degree routes? I mean, you, we've already spoken about you, you went and did uh, English literature. A lot of people, I assume, done uh, English creative writing and then either gone on to do a master's or um, gone straight into the job. I'm just thinking, are there other routes into journalism that you uh, you know I think it really depends because I actually think that you can get into journalism without any qualifications but okay. I think the, that would be more the freelance journalism that I'm doing now mm -hmm. so that would be because if you read a paper or you read a publication you can pitch the editor of that and you can write them an email with an idea mm -hmm. and you might get commissioned and anybody can do that if you want to pitch an article idea to an editor nobody is going to ask you for qualifications if they like your idea they'll commission it yeah. and so i think not enough people realize that they feel that they don't have the experience to pitch an article idea to say one of the editors at the times you can totally do that it might they might not get back to you but you can you have that ability if you have a great idea um i think if you want to get a full-time job at a newspaper or a publication um you may need more qualifications um or at least quite a lot of experience oh, yeah. um so i think if you could, then the typical route would be to get a degree, to get a journalism qualification, to do work experience. Um, but if you don't, there is still opportunity there to become a successful journalist. There's still routes there. So I think um, don't feel that that's the only route. But definitely, um, I would suggest probably, you know, striving to go to university and learn more and hone your skills. That would be that would be ideal. Fantastic. Amber, um, really appreciate your time. That's uh, been absolutely brilliant. All the best and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.